<laughs> Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Hey, check this out. I found this, and I think it's going to be worth sharing. Associated depressed, as Rush Limbaugh used to say, Taliban capture major northern city. They approach the Afghan capital. Now, I want to go in, and I'm not going to read the whole article. I, I, I just want to have a source where you guys can look at it. The Taliban's, the Taliban... More the Taliban's, man, and we right here. Sorry. The Taliban have captured a large, heavily defended city in northern Afghanistan and a major setback for the government, and the insurgents are approaching the capital less than three weeks before the U.S. hopes to complete a troop withdrawal. Now, this is being spun in such a way that implies that it was a bad idea for the United States to leave this region due to what the... Islamic radical terrorists and uh, other monsters and child molesters and silencers are going to do to people. Here's the way that works. I'm going to spell this out real quick. One of my problems with the legal system, and I can use a comparison here that a lot of people will understand, our country in America, in, in large parts of the supposedly free world too, they have a growing habit of forcing things upon people which they do not want. Now, a lot of people would think about the, the vaccine, but there are other instances where this is the case. Um, if someone has a drink or two. Now, our DUI, our DUI laws in most instances are ridiculous. You can get a, D, you can get a DUI... When you're not even drunk. And the reason for that is because it's about generating revenue. It's not really about keeping anybody safe. It's not at all about keeping anybody safe. Maybe if you're a, a third tier DUI or something. But there's no way somebody is, like my chubby self would be intoxicated at two shots. It's not going to happen. However, if you get caught doing it, in order to, 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 fleece, to fleece you, to get money into the system, to steal money from your pocket in essence... The way to do that is, in many instances, to force you into some kind of recovery program. And even if you're not forced into it, you end up paying a huge amount of money for a three-day stay, and you listen to some people yammer on and on and on, and try to convince you that you have a problem that you don't have. Um, have I ever been through it? Yeah, I'll be honest. Yeah, I got a DUI like 10 or 11 years ago. Um, <clears throat> I was a DJ. I am still a DJ. I, I've been DJ, I've DJed for, God, almost all of my adult life. So one DUI does not a heavy drinker make. But I had, um, I had a, I think I had a, a last call shot. And she probably free poured it. So I had like a shot and a half. They gave me a DUI over it. So I'm sitting there at the DUI camp that they make obligatory. And I'm listening to these people yammer on and on. You know, imagine if you had hit somebody and alcohol would have been the cause. What? And a shot. If I hit somebody, I would have hit them even if I had never had the shot. You understand that? Even if I had never drank the shot, I still would have had the same accident had I had an accident that night. The alcohol would not have been a factor. But when you see something like that, there's an accident, somebody had two shots, they say that alcohol was a factor. What? That is the... He might have had a Tylenol. Was Tylenol a factor? That is ridiculous. So then they send the person to mandatory uh, medical treatment is what it is. It's outpatient services for alcohols. Alcoholics. Alcohols. For alcoholics. You know, the alcohols that the Taliban drink. Um, God, I'm, you're going to unsubscribe by the, by the swarms. Um, you're forcing someone into a medical treatment. That's what you're doing. And then sometimes longer than the three days. How do you think that works? How does you cannot force anyone into something? When I was <clears throat> in the, what I call the DUI camp for the three days, I saw people who you could tell their, their muscles are atrophied. They're like shaking, trying to get through the three days without a drink. They're hurt. They could probably use a little bit of help. However, they don't want it. And you cannot force help upon those who don't want it. It can't be done. Now, how does that tie into Afghan? Afghanistan. 
It ties into the Afghan because you sew it together. How does it tie into Afghanistan? You cannot force liberty onto a people who are in love with fascism. In this case, Islamic fascism. You can't do it. So what we did is we paid a lot of money to fund the police and to teach the police and various security forces in Afghanistan how to fight against Islamic terrorism. The trouble is, a lot of the people who we trained either were or have been converted into the same kind of radical beliefs which we have been battling for so long over there. So what we've done, in essence, is simply opened up an avenue to where our enemies now have immaculate training. Absolutely immaculate training, thanks to us. It's true. That's what we did. The same is true for their army and their military forces. All of them. We trained all of them, and now they've turned. Do you know that the, uh, the, the uh, Navy SEALs, I was listening to this on uh, the Pastor Ernie Sanders uh, radio broadcast, uh, the... Navy SEALs who were in the helicopter accident, they don't know exactly what caused that, but it's interesting that Afghan trainees, who America was training, in order for political correctness and to prove that we're all on the same side, we're all on the same side, don't you think we're not? In order to prove that, they were bringing... And we don't even know who they are because the government hasn't said. Bringing people who may or may not have been vetted as well as we think they were onto these missions. We all know how that went helicopter down. Um, we gave a lot of training to people who may have hated us or may have been instructed to hate us. We had no business being there. Because these people, and I don't mean these people by race, I mean people who are radicalized and want to hurt people. These people will always be like that. They're basically animals. We've had them with us, and mankind has been plagued by them through all of human history. What we did is we sent a lot of our people over to push an ideal, and that ideal was not accepted by the people to whom we tried to push it on. Now, am I saying that we should never be out there pushing the truth of the historical Christian faith? No, there's a reason that it's historically accurate. Am I saying that we should not do things like try to better the lives of those who live in misery? No, I'm not saying that either. There's certainly a lot of room for charity. America is the most charitable country in the world. But one thing we cannot do is nation build. And while Joe Biden is anything but a wonderful president in the eyes of most prudent people, the fact that he has finally moved people, our troops and our warriors and our heroes out of Afghanistan and prevented nation building is the best thing he could have done. Now, the best thing we can do is as a nation and on a local level, we don't want the federal government involved, but on a local level, we need to help those in need. We need to help them. Uh, we need to help them fight for themselves now. And I don't mean give them arms. I don't mean all of that. We can, we can make sure they have food. You know, I don't mind food drops. Again, I'm not talking about the government doing it. We cannot stop what's going to happen over there. At some point, the people who are being oppressed are going to have to stand up and have their equivalent of the American Revolution. We can support that. We should support that, but we should not be involved in that. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Please donate at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com through PayPal. And good night, friends, and God bless. Thank you for listening. Thank you for hitting share, and thank you for subscribing.